because this is everywhere today. City, Manchester City agree a deal with Haaland. So this is now out. Manchester City apparently, reportedly, closing in on Erling Haaland of Borussia Dortmund. Um, it's reported that they will sign a deal to get him for 500 grand a week with uh, the Norwegian striker joining them uh, next season. Wow. Of course, he's the son of a former Manchester City midfielder. His, his Alpha Inga Halland, who played for the football club before. And he's long been identified by City as the man they want. So now it appears uh, the activation of this release clause of 63 million, no problem for City. Mm. And it's done. It will be done. Yep. Um it, you can understand is, that part of it. Yeah. You can what, understand that part of it, of course you can. Because what you, can't you understand? Because I know you, you've got your ducks in a row with this one. What you're ready to, to let go with? Well, I mean, obviously we spoke about last week about the, the reports in the press that he was coming at a certain level um, of wage that was um, £600,000 a week net. Yeah. Which we, we had to walk through Trevor that that would gross up to a million pounds a week. Um, and I felt that was just ridiculous. I mean, we are already in the territory of ridiculous level of return for footballers. You know, I don't begrudge anybody making money, Jim. People deserve to be successful in their field and if they're good at what they do, they should get rewarded. But we are getting into the level of what footballers are getting paid. It's just, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Now, I don't know whether this is £500,000 a week after tax or £500,000 a week before tax. Either which way, we are moving into a territory of obscene amounts of money um, and players are getting more money than they ever dreamed of about. Unfortunately for me, I don't understand why they walk around like half the time like impending doom. They should walk around like Christmas has come every day, yeah. all of these players, because yeah. they get such rewards that no one would have ever, ever envisaged. Should we be surprised, though? This was always no. going to happen, though, wasn't No, we it? shouldn't be surprised. Two million a month. That is the reality of the situation. That's the circumstances that the, 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 the lack of organic growth in football, that certain clubs that are, that are, are prepared to pay certain salaries are prepared to put into their football club, whether that's PSG, whether it's Man City, whether it's Chelsea, um, or whether it will soon be Newcastle. These motivations behind owning these football clubs are not the same as other people's motivations. And so they don't get bound by the same obligations, responsibilities, and they try to find their way around financial fair play and often do. Now, the, the key component of this is I'm not... Look, £63 million for a footballer is madness but we've already sold we've all that ship has already sailed we've already paid 100 million pounds for jack Grealish. we yeah, already know what yeah. footballers go for yeah so when you're buying a player this age and this level of achievement currently 82 goals and 85 games for dortmund puts you into a situation where you're buying an elite striker at the beginning of his career is a hell of a lot of return opportunity for you to have from him i'm assuming they'll sign him on a five-year contract so 63 million pounds for a player in mm. today's marketplace of that caliber is probably reasonable money to spend so you don't look at that and say, well, this is a transfer fee. You capitalise that transfer fee. It goes on your balance sheet. He's worth that kind of money. Then you look at the salary. Then you look at all the other ghastly stuff that goes with it. You look at what Riola gets out of it. And, you know, we saw last week that he was, you know, they, they, they were talking about paying him £70 million pounds in agents' fees. And Christ knows, I hope that's not true because that's just obscene. Then you're looking at his father and him getting an opportunity out of it. And I don't know whose career it is. I thought it was his son's. But unfortunately, so many parents live vicariously through the deeds of their children. And here's another opportunity for that. Is and the all... father not wrong to get something out of it? Well, I don't know. I, I, I sincerely hope that when I'm older and my son goes and carves his way in the world, I don't need him to supplement my life. Um, different strokes with different folks. I don't like it. I think that the business of a player signing between clubs and other people getting paid inordinate amounts of money for what? What does Riola get in 70 million quid for if he's indeed getting that? I know some of this will be hyperbole from the press, but even if he's getting 70p, it's too much for me. Um, and if he's getting 70 million quid or 10 million quid or 15 million quid, this is all money that's going out of football. It's not for the benefit of football. It's for the benefit of Riola so that he can create the next set of division. The moment, I, I, if Haaland doesn't do very well at Man City, you can believe in will come mm. uh, Riola with his divisive particular brand of tactics that he did with Pogba. But what, what we do know, Simon, is that if Manchester City win it this year, this will be their fourth title in five years. Yeah, but they're, they're, if, they're, if, if, if margins. You've got, if you've got margins. Haaland in there for City who scores for fun, no. This this dominance is set to continue. It's now margins. that can't be good it's for margins. the Premier League. It's their margins are very very small now, and if you look at the what we've just, we've just analysed, there's one point difference between Liverpool and Man City over the last five seasons. I don't think that Haaland's going to send them off over the horizon. Liverpool are a formidable side. Chelsea will get themselves together somewhere along the line. United will become better. But you said yesterday we're in danger of a three-tier Premier League. We are, but that doesn't mean that, that doesn't mean Man City are going to win the league. No, every but they certainly lead the way. 
I'm not so sure. And the I'm, golf I'm not, I'm not, but between the three that are there, yeah. and uh, yeah, that may well be true. That may well be true, and it's for the others to bridge that gap. It's for the others. What, what you know, we've got a big six in this league. We've got a big six, which can, can consists of Tottenham, Arsenal, and Manchester United, arguably. And those clubs are not going to sit on their hands and allow these clubs to disappear into the ether. Liverpool are my, are my, my margins away for Man City. Margins. Yeah. So I, I look at it and say, yes, it's a component part that Man City haven't got. And it will it will add to them, but I don't think it will send them into the stratosphere. I think that Liverpool have bought a boy in Diaz that will change the direction of travel for Liverpool. So I think that there's going to be still the competitivity. But what, how, how many teams do you really expect in any league? How, I know in an ideal world we'd have from one to twenty would all be rocking and rolling and competing, but in most leagues you don't have more than three or four sides that are really going to dominate those leagues what, and why would it be any different for this league why what would you say this morning to manchester city fans who are listening to you what would you say to them to dissuade them of the fact that this can only be good for their club because there's no there's no reason to dissuade them it can only be good for their club i mean if you look at the transfer spend over the last three years but you're still not having it well i'm not having the inflation in football salaries because it has to become somewhere people cry and they get nasty about the reality of the european super league but these are the reasons why there's this, these people talk about two tournaments and X amount of teams going into the Champions League and X amount of this and managers sitting there crying about fixture lists and telling everybody that it's a hard done by world that they live in. And the reasons why is because this constant need to keep feeding this ridiculous express of finances to keep on raising the bar on player salaries and ostensibly it is done by the clubs that have a kind of ownership model. I and mean, let's be fair to Man City over the last three seasons their net spend has been no different to Tottenham's, no different to Manchester, no difference to Chelsea's. Mm. They've spent net 200 million quid. So this argument that we constantly make about they're a cash cow for to spending money, they don't. They balance their books a little bit better than they have done previously. But there's only a certain type of club that will pay a, pay a £500,000 a week wage. It'll be a club that's owned by an oligarch or Middle Eastern consortium because their agenda is different. It's not a football agenda. Football is the product that they're attaching themselves to right. to legitimise other parts of their reasons for being there. So foreseeably, this gap's never going to narrow down. It's only going to get wider. Well, the only way it's going to narrow down is if there is real governance and if the threat of independent regulation comes about with the FA being stepped in as a proper regulator and financial controls are put on the Premier League to say... If you buy a football club, you can spend what you want for three years, but after yep. that, you can't keep on spending that way. And also, we want wage controls. But £500,000, no one should really want this. We throw these figures around in a country that's got food banks up the yin-yang as if five hundred grand a week on a football is just something we should all accept. Yeah, it, You know, they're not worth it. He's not worth £500,000 a week. And these players that are getting paid this kind of money aren't worth it. Back in the day when people were making lots and lots of money, do you know what the key component was? You had to be really, really, really good. And it seems to me now in football that you can be quite average and become a multi, multi-millionaire. And I don't, it's not bitterness. It's not resentment. I've had my time. I made a lot of money. And I was really good at what I did and I wasn't so good at other things. That's why I cost myself a lot of money. In this world of football, it seems to me sometimes, and not in the case of Erling Haaland, because he isn't mediocre, but the rough, the rough beneath him. What that 500 grand salary does, right, this is what a 500 grand salary does, it makes a 200 grand sal salary look like it's an average pay. So someone that's average in the Premier League gets paid £10 million a year. And you've got to sit back and pause for a second and go, are these players going to kick one foot? You know, and you look at it and go, how do you get £10 million a year yeah. to be an average Premier League footballer? That's what a 500 yeah. grand salary does to the rest of the the rest of the, the pay pa packets that why people... didn't you and I just stick to kicking a ball about I know I know if only Man City Erling Haaland yours for 2 million a month wow 11.30 Jim White and Simon Jordan Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM on DAB via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker TalkSport